All right, welcome into the morning burrito podcast. <laughs> Technical failures. <laughs> this is our second time trying this. Yeah, it's so. great. Got right to the end of the show, and yeah. So this one, by the way, is recorded. Obviously, we're telling you that. Um, we we tried to record it, and um, we did not accomplish it. We did not accomplish it, which is foreshadowing. I'm Michael. <laughs> I'm still Eric, and it is the Morning Burrito Podcast. We are uh, excited to be here this this afternoon. Again. Noon. It's going to be dinner time um, shortly. Hey, so one thing that we've been talking about, but we have not gotten any help from our people on. Bulldoze right into it, aren't you? I am. Um, do, we, do we need to move the show time? Uh, they never talk back to us. I don't know. We hear these... these like rumors and, and and comments about, you know, I watched it more when it was on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And, it, you know, it maybe just doesn't even matter. Maybe we just do it and then just post it. And then whenever they watch it, they watch it. Um, I, I like live shows better because they can at least type to us. So if you, if you really are passionate about hearing this podcast or seeing this podcast at a different time live, please let us know. We are almost done asking yeah, I think I think if if we get past this point and nobody comments on it, I think we just stand pat, stay where we're at, and call it good. And if you listen to it the following Tuesday at ten o'clock in the morning, you'll good for you, <laughs> good, good for you. All right, so to, on today's show, we're going to ask the question: How much do we attribute our success or our failures to our purpose and and how how does that affect us if we do that if we if we're doing that I can, I count the last hour of my life recording a show that didn't record as not accomplished and you failed Wow <laughs> On that note we'll be right back on the Morning Burrito podcast <laughs> And, and, and you know, it, the, it's like the first the first show is usually like really good, so I don't know how this show is going to come out. Well, sometimes the second take has been better than the first, okay. so let's hope so. All right, we've certainly been uh, more funny this time around. I, well, we'll see. <laughs> so one of the things that we are uh, we are getting ready to finish, you, you can tell this morning that I haven't had coffee, even though I never drink coffee, and you have not had coffee. Yeah. And uh, we're it, in the final week of prayer and fasting here at Hermnaz. It is catching up with you. It is. Although I, I am impressed. You have been here early every day of the fast. Well, in it's the not office. that I've been here early. I mean, my day a lot of times starts early. I just don't start it here. Yeah, but like you're you're not always here at like 715 in the morning. Like I've been very impressed with that. Like, ah, all right, well, I don't know if that means noticing. because there's no coffee, there's no people time with coffee. <laughs> it's limited. I your mean, relationship I haven't time. had appointments. I haven't. I mean, <laughs> people have just kind of, you know, no, no breakfast and no coffee in. outside <laughs> their own homes. Hey, our men's group has been great. They get together still on on you know like the, this morning, and but they don't do breakfast. They just talk and pray, and it's been great. That's good. Yeah, I've I've been once. Since it started back up. Yeah, we noticed that when the food's gone, you haven't shown up. So I only went one time when the food was there. <laughs> it's early for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got I got toddler that jumps in my bed and bothers me. Hey, that's who, by the way, you. shares a birthday with you this I know. Sunday. Wow, it's this week. I had yeah. You're gonna be fifty seven? Yeah. No. No. No, 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 no. Sixty? No, no. no. You Am I going just, the wrong direction? You are just, you're cruising. You're 42? Cruising. You know, my son asked me what I want for lunch because in our family we get to, like, pick our, like, birthday. Lunch. Oh, and you're out of the fast. Man, yeah, you timed that fast. perfectly. It's perfect. And before <laughs> I could, I mean, he asked the question before I could even say what I wanted. He says, hey, Dad, how about halibut fish and chips? Ooh. I'm like, I guess that's what I'm having for my birthday. So, yeah. So what Which time? is not a bad thing at all. So what time do I come I to your house? I am not telling you that. Wow. Yeah. Your own staff you nope. don't invite to your mm-hmm. birthday party. Nope. Man. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really a party. It's just a fish feast. Yes, but, you know, it's going to be fabulous. Claire would, Claire would like It'd halibut fish and I'll chips. I'll give her fish. I'll give her fries. Covered in chocolate. Ew. Yeah. Chocolate <laughs> fries? You never had sweet, that? Sweet and salty? Oh, man, it's great. No, I prefer chili on my fries. 
and anyway, cheese. So Sunday's lunch will be accomplished with fish and chips. So if you uh, if you have been journeying with us, or even if you haven't been journeying with us in the fasting, uh, just know that 9.30 a.m. this coming oh, yeah. Sunday on the 29th, we have breakfast that is going to be hot and ready for you. And it's French toast and, and bacon. Bacon. Lots Listen, of bacon. Yeah, and if you've been fasting these 21 days, this breakfast will mess you up. Yeah, uh, interesting what service will look like or smell yeah. like or sound like ten, at 10.30. Ten, 10.30 ten will be really... It's a good thing our music is, is is loud because be it might you know mask some of the there will be an intestinal issues. There will be an orchestra Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our wives are probably shaking their head right now. Like, boys, move on. This is why my wife doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> I just embarrass her. All right. So the question again that we're going to attempt to answer today and if you have thoughts please put them in the comments we would love to hear what you have to say uh how much do we attribute our success or our failures to our purpose our god-given purpose and and how does that affect us you know whether it's humility or self-esteem or pride or whatever Um, so that's kind of where we're going to go today um let me ask you this if if you are a typical man, do you, if you're a successful in your career, whatever that is, electrician, you know, uh, Wall Street guy, teacher, whatever the case is, do you, would you attribute, even as a pastor, let's, let's just take it very specifically to you since you've been in ministry a long time, your successes in ministry, do you attribute those to your purpose or something else? Well, I think I think all right, so you say you're trying to put it all on my shoulders today. I am gonna keep it broad because I think I think generally, yes, we accomplish things and we feel good. If we don't accomplish things, we feel bad. And yes, we attribute a lot of that to our success and our failure. Just completely you, right around. You were like a White House press Is secretary on Is that good? one. Is it good? I, I played the role of Peter Ducey with uh Kareem Jean Pierre, you know. KG, C, right on CGP, KGP. I don't remember. Anyway, um, so I'm going to ask it again. I answered so, it really good the first show that we did. <laughs> so for you, do you attribute your success to your purpose? You know, or man, something else? You, you, you try to, um, because you have to have your purpose focused on God. I mean, that's that that's the that's the thing that I think is the that's our foundation for the show. That if you're watching it and you're like, I don't really know what I attribute things to, it's got to be because your your foothold is in your purpose, what the Lord has. Um, and I go right to Psalm uh, 33. It says, but the plans of the Lord stands firm forever, right? I mean, the plan he has for you, he created you for a plan and a purpose. He, he gives you life abundantly. We're going to talk about some of that here in a minute. Hmm. But the purposes of his heart, they go for all generations, which means you have a task to do, right? Follow his plan, accomplish his plan, pass it on to the next generation. Um, because they're part of the plan that you are called to accomplish. So, um, so spiritually, we have to look at our accomplishments uh, based on our plan. But you know what? Honestly, man, where the, where the rubber hits the road for either Christians or non-Christians in the church, out of the church, is seriously, I just don't feel like I'm accomplishing what I'm, what I'm called to do. Um, how many people do we know that we talk to that that they're not working in their field that they went to school for, mm. that they're not doing what uh, their passions are even like. They're, it's a job, and it's turned into a career because it's making good money. Now they've been in it so long, they got tenure, and all of a sudden it's like life is three-quarters over, and you're about ready to retire. You go, man, I haven't even done anything I thought I was going to accomplish. Um, and all that brings this emotional roller coaster, uh, right? That and we're going to talk about how your accomplishments tie to your, your emotions here in a minute, but... but it does tie to our success, and I think for me, it really, it really shouldn't, because there's so many things in life that where we do that we're not successful at, but it doesn't mean you're not accomplishing what God has for you, because God has a bigger picture and a plan. So, so let's break this into two parts. So we have that was like a huge mini sermon series right there. So we have success, accomplishment, if you will, and then we've got failure, um, brokenness on the other side. So when we attribute our success to our purpose, what are some of the negatives that that can lead to for us? That we're never good enough. 
Uh, I think we feel like a lot of times if we're not successful in something that we have failed. Um, and we feel like maybe we haven't um, maybe done our best when really we have done our best. And we feel like our best isn't good enough. I mean, so I think that's a really so a big thing. essentially long way of saying we we sh- continue to strive harder and harder and push ourselves beyond where we necessarily yeah, should. Or, or you or you give up, right? Because you haven't accomplished it, you haven't been successful in it. So therefore, why why try harder? So we try something different, and then we're not good in that. So we look at that and go like failed again, and then we just keep trying. And then before you know it, we stop trying. Do you think that uh, when we're attributing our successes to our purpose, that it can lead to an overabundance of pride? Yeah, pride and lack of humility. You bet. What What's the consequence of having too much pride, well, scripture, Pastor? Well, Scripture says we fall, right? I mean, pride comes before the great fall. Yeah, you're the, going to crash. You, you always think of that as a cliche, but you that's do. actually Scripture. But that's, that that is Scripture, and that's like truth. That's an absolute truth. It's the Word of God, and you know, you can almost see it happen to people they're not very humble and then before you know it down the road well of course they crashed because they did anyway so yeah yeah so you know the pride the pride thing no matter how successful in life you are there is going to be a fall right like we we all have moments in our life when things come come tumbling down i mean that's it's part of being a human being whether it's our health our family's health uh whether it's financial uh whether it's losing a job uh kids you know, something wrong with your kids or whatever, like something's going to go wrong in your life. No one lives a perfect life where they can say, oh, yeah, my life was perfect. I didn't have any issues the whole time. Like, that's not how life works. Um, So attributing too much of your success to your purpose um, also has the added downside of it typically becomes very self-focused. And our successes should never be self-focused because they don't originate from us. And we'll get to that a little bit later, but that's just some something to think about is that your successes n- should never be attributed to yourself because they don't come from you. Anything right. that you succeed in, you may have had a hand hand in it for sure, but they ultimately don't originate from you. Yep. Um, now let's take it to the flip side. So oftentimes we attribute our failures to our purpose or a lack thereof that we feel like we have. We, we, uh, beat ourselves up. We we begin to have that self esteem issue come in, and our self image gets affected. Um, you know, you you talked about it. You know, we particularly as men, we I mean, we're guilty of this. Okay, our identity, our our whole being can be wrapped up into our success. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's family success, career, whatever, we can very. I mean, even as us as pastors, like. Our church not succeeding. You actually mentioned it on the pulpit on Sunday. You know, people will look at when we do an altar call, for instance, and no one comes down to the front. Oh man, you guys must feel like failures when that happens, right? No, because we don't attribute our success to that. Like, right. But you know, that's a great example because there was a day when I would feel bad, mm-hmm. right? Be be like, wow, did I miss the mark? Did I not? Was I not listening to the spirit? Did, was did I not I, supposed to do that? Did I not preach what I thought I was supposed to preach? Should I have said something? different maybe i was a little too harsh maybe i wasn't harsh enough i mean so you go home and you beat yourself up self up over lunch pastors do that i mean oh that's absolutely you, true you, it, lunch is not fun sometimes uh, or that drive home anyway uh, is not fun sometimes um uh but yeah uh but then you had to get over the i had to get over the fact that okay my purpose is not to have people come to the altar my purpose was to preach what god told me to preach and to give them the opportunity, just because they didn't come to the altar doesn't mean that an experience with Christ didn't take place and that we right. have to remind ourselves of that. Right. That for whatever reason, the physical movement didn't come with the maybe spiritual heart movement. But right. but it, that gets us to a bigger picture is that, you know, I think we didn't even mention this in the first one. So now the second time around, I, I can <laughs> mention this. Um, if you go back and read the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, Jeremiah is a failure. By every human metric, he would be considered a failure. Um, Jeremiah won. was a bullfrog. <laughs> Sorry, I that's what they said it on Wednesday night because I brought Jeremiah up oh. during the Esther series. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah he he's considered the weeping prophet, meaning he cried a lot, and he also was a failure. He, uh, as far as humans would 
define it. He 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 never won anybody to God. He never changed people's hearts. The the nation of Israel continued to move in the wrong direction, even though he was he was preaching truth that God had given him. Um, but his success wasn't tied to what the what they did. His success was tied into doing what God asked him to do and and fulfilling that purpose that God had given him. Yeah, so so jumping in here, uh, if you're watching today, this is where I think culture and the church uh, kind of collide a little bit. Um, <laughs> a lot of it. A, a lot of it. <laughs> because a, a lot of it, that could actually be a cool name. A lot of it? What's your name? A lot of it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> so if, if you're watching today and you're struggling Katie. O- over things. Yeah, <laughs> K- Katie, Katie and Graydon. <laughs> a lot of it. A lot of it would be a good name. That'd be your new, <laughs> your new grandkids' name. <laughs> hey, that's that's a gender-neutral name. That'd be great. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt <laughs> or a coffee mug. A lot of it, Fritz. A lot of it, a lot of it, Fritz. Um. Anyway, so now your wife is shaking I'm her like, head. Now I'm like, okay, I'm off there. Um. The I, I forgot. Uh, now I'll move on. Uh, <laughs> you you started it. It'll it'll come back. Oh, accomplishment. Um. I don't even remember. <laughs> that was funny to watch in real time. I don't even like, remember. I remember. Uh, nope. Yep, uh, it's gone. There. <laughs> All right, so so I think we've established that attributing your success to your purpose can be detrimental to you. Um, we've also established that attributing your failures to your purpose can be detrimental to you because regardless of whether you succeed or not from a earthly human perspective, your purpose isn't wrapped up in that. Success and failure from an earthly perspective is not wrapped up in your purpose. So here's a, a deeper question. Do we as human beings take too much credit for the good things that happen to us? And do we also take too much of the credit for things going bad? And if so, on either of those counts, what does that then do to us? Hmm. So it's really easy to take credit for it, I think. Um, take credit for the accomplishments because it's it's what we've done. We've put our sweat and tears and blood into this thing, right? Into this day, we put up with a bunch of junk from other people. We have listened to different attitudes. We've had a deal with coworkers and screaming kids. And yes, uh, I made it through the day. I've accomplished whatever was on my list. Um, but then when if failure comes, I don't. I, I think that's split. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think that's probably pretty split. Where there's a whole lot of people that take every little. I didn't meet the goal. I didn't check off the list. I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. Um, and so they go down that road. Where the other part, I think, is is they just get mad at God and say, well, it's God's fault. Mm. Um, God, I wasn't successful in that. I wasn't, you know, I didn't accomplish that. And so I, I think that is maybe a little little two-sided there. So I think it, it, it's important to note that if you find yourself on any of those taking any of those roads, whether it's success or failure, uh, I think it's important for you to remember and to, s- to stick this in your brain and, and leave it there, lock it in the closet so, or in the cabinet so that it is available for use at any time. Um, you are not responsible for the successes in your life. God is. And also, you are not responsible for the failures all the time. Now, sometimes we are like sometimes we make bad choices and are unwise and bad things ensue because we've made bad decisions. Yeah. And you're in the middle of your mess because you put yourself there. Sure. Yeah. But there are many times where life has just happened and you live in a broken world. There's no such thing as utopia. (laughs) um, Things are not going to be perfect. Um, That's one of the the errors in logic in our political world these days is this idea that we can get things perfect. Like that doesn't exist until Jesus returns. Like there is no such thing as perfect um, until he comes back. So don't take too much credit for the good. You can take some of the credit. I mean, you did do the work, you know, whatever, but you have to remember who gave you that ability to do that and who blessed you with that success. And on the flip side, Sometimes bad things happen, and you have to attribute it to the right person, and that's the enemy. So, but but I think that you can also go and, and say, okay, um, I can I can take the credit for the success and the accomplishment, uh, not not all of it, of course, but you're not taking the accomplishment. And this is where I think the, the part of the line is that we get we get lost in is 
what you touched on is it's not us, right? It's God that's in us that helped us to accomplish that goal or that task or, I mean, fill in your own blank. Mm -hmm. Um, But when we're talking about our accomplishment with people, um, it's not, look what I did. It's look what God did. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I I think of um, Moses uh, at the Red Sea, just when you're talking about that, is, is, you know, Moses didn't cross the Red Sea by himself. Um, and he gave all kudos to the Lord's provision in that. Um, sure, it was his hand, it was his staff, it was his journey through the desert. Um, but what he gave God glory for was he parted the sea. Mm-hmm. So Moses was like, hey, I was faithful, right? And look what, look what we accomplished. Um, so I don't put that in your own, your own world today. Um, and, and like, okay, what have I accomplished? And can you see God's hand in that? Well, Isaiah 26, 12 actually touches on exactly what you're talking about. Isaiah 26, 12, uh, Isaiah says, Lord, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say some, he doesn't say much of what we do. All that we accomplish that we have accomplished is really from you. And, and this goes to our financial wealth. We, we say that often that, you know, our money is not our money. It, our belongings, our possessions are not our own. They're from God. The same is true of our accomplishments. They are from God. God gave you the ability to do, you know, <laughs> say you're a professional athlete. God gave you the ability to play a game, a sport for, the, for your financial well-being. That's God's blessing you with that ability. Not everybody gets blessed that way. Right. Um you know, whether you're a, a Wall Street broker and you're you're winning at the stock market, which <laughs> I guess nobody right now is winning at the stock market. Could be better. Um, but if you're if you're succeeding in business or whatever, that's because God enabled you to and because God is blessing you. Does that mean he's not blessing you if you're not winning in financial ways? Right. No. But you have to you have to acknowledge where those successes come from. And I think even for us as pastors, this is something we can get wrapped up in. Like you know, if our church is growing, look, man, look at what we're doing. Man, oh. we're really leading well. Yeah, there's a total comparison when pastors get together. Oh, yeah. How's your church doing? And when they say that, what are they asking? They're asking what your numbers are. <laughs> What's your numbers? What's your church like? Yeah. Yeah, what they're really wanting to know is, is your church bigger than mine? Right. And how can I measure myself as a pastor against yep. you? Which we shouldn't be measuring ourselves against each other because each community is different, right? Um. So uh, I think one of the things that we've kind of touched on, but we haven't really talked a lot about is... I'm getting the two shows confused. <laughs> the two shows? Yeah, the first one we did. Oh. <laughs> so one of the things that in this show we have not touched on, <laughs> we touched on in the last one, is that um, when when we are failing at anything... Um, we touched on how that can affect our self-esteem. It can affect our view of ourself, our identity. So, so how do you see that playing out in, in, in the real world? Like somebody's failing at life, what, or how, as they see it, right? May not be that they're failing at life, but they see it that way. What is that doing to their psyche, to their, their personality, like all of those things? It messes us up is what it does um, because we're not rooted in, in Christ. So I'm going to go right back to Psalm, right? I mean, that's you got to have that foundation. But even though you have the foundation, it still can get rocky, right? Because um, we do measure our self worth by our accomplishments. Uh, as Christians, non Christians, we, we, we do that. Um, and it's kind of an ebb and flow kind of thing uh, because when it's good, accomplishments are good, we're good. Our, our mental health is healthy. We got a great outlook on life. It's always sunny. But then when. You know, things don't quite get accomplished, and we can't really feel that. Um, you know, it's kind of like a partly sunny, partly cloudy day. I mean, and that's kind of where we where we live, and and nobody likes that. Nobody wants to stay there. So, mm-hmm. um, but I but I think we have to to not look at what our circumstances, but look back at how God has been faithful in connecting the dots. We talked about that on Sunday a little bit, connecting the dots um, to where you might not feel accomplished in in a task or you might not feel accomplished in your life 
because what you thought it was going to be is not how it's li- how you're living right now. So look back on your life. Count, c- just connect the dots um, and and see where God is, is faithful. And we, we talked about that with Esther, uh, uh, this last sermon series that we did, mm-hmm. um, of connecting the dots of Esther's life and Mordecai's life to go, it's, it's not your story. It, mm-hmm. It's God's story. And and if you're watching today, I want to encourage you that your your life and your accomplishments are not yours. Your unaccomplishments are not yours. It's not your story. Um, and, and we have to understand that God's working in your life for His plan, for His accomplishment, which is to get, you know, um, His kingdom built. And I think. Filled. Yeah, and I think you've just touched on a really key point here: is that, um, and and we. We acknowledge today we're talking a lot more to Christians than we are to non-Christians. That's for sure. Um, but, but here's the thing: our our life is not about us. <laughs> like, I think, I think too often we are so self-consumed with who we are and what we want and what we need and da da da. It, like, there's a lot of we and a lot of I happening um, when we when we think and when we speak. Um, our life is not for us. We were not born to live a life for ourselves. We were born to live for God and for other people. Like that's, that's our purpose. That's our. That's what God has created us to be. And, you know, and sometimes, sometimes you have to just stand there at the kitchen sink, and, and go like, okay, this is not. This is not my life. It's not for me. Give God glory for whatever it is that He's doing, and just move on. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes, sometimes, success comes, failure comes, but, but I think at the root of all of this we have to remember that it's not about our will at any time. It's even though we may perceive it that way, it's, it's not about our will. It, you, you said it there in that, in that, uh, in that piece of scripture is that the plans of the Lord don't change. The plans of the Lord stay consistent and never move, never change because God is never, never changing. He's, he's consistent. Right. And so, we need to find ways to live into the will that God has around us, the purpose that God has for us. Um, Philippians 1, uh, chapter uh, chapter 1, verse 6 says this, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. That That alludes to this purpose. Like, our purpose is to fulfill God's will, his work within us. Um and he will accomplish that through you, regardless of whether you're successful mm-hmm. at life or, or quote unquote, a failure at life. I think what we, our biggest suggestion to you, to any of you, is completely do your best to completely disconnect your success and failure from what God is calling you to, what his purpose on your life is. Because once you start tying those things together, you're going to find that you're going to beat yourself up a lot more than is healthy. For your for your mental health and your spiritual and emotional health, yeah, and you've got you've got to remember that your your faith is fact, and it's got to be your faith in Christ that gets you to the point to where you have the accomplish uh, the accomplishment, um, and you have to recognize that. Yeah, and we we mentioned earlier our sometimes our identity is so wrapped up into, you know, did we succeed? Did we fail? Here's the here's the the truth that the cu- culture this is again where culture and the church collide. All of the stuff in our culture today that talks about identity, whether it's sexual identity, gender identity, career. I mean, how do we introduce ourselves as adults? What do you, you introduce yourself by what you do? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's there's there, how many kids do you have? How you know how long have you been married to your wife? All these different things are how we identify ourselves. But the reality is, according to Paul in Scripture. Our identity is that of a child of God, is a is a is a child of Christ, and nothing else matters. <laughs> like none of those other identifiers, as American or whatever, like none of that matters when it comes up against Jesus Christ and being His child, His create creation. But see, uh, we we sit with our people, and our people hear pastors say that all the time. Yep. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. In reality, is everything matters. Um, and, and I think for us, just to be really real with you today that are, are watching, we say nothing else matters because we believe that, but we also live life like you and know that it really does matter. It really does matter what somebody else thinks about us, how they talk about us, how they look at us, how they view us. All that matters 
to the human side of us, and that's that's where that that battle comes in because we forget that God, um, He wants to accomplish His work in our lives, and he, part of His work in our life is that He He's created you so that you can have life abundant mm-hmm. and, and have it to the full, abundant life, abundant. Uh, abundant living, you know, uh, in grace. He wants you to have an abundance of mercy. He wants you to have abundance of salvation and abundance of forgiveness and uh, uh, an abundance of joy and abundance of peace. Um, and he wants you to have an abundance of, of who he is. And therefore, nothing else matters. So if I can encourage you at all today, remember that, that he wants you to have an abundance of things. And maybe if you're in a dark spot today, and you're not really feeling too accomplished with anything in life, um, you know what? Uh, think on things above. Look to him and, and, and just just take a breath. Sometimes you just got to take a breath and go like, okay, is this an all about me moment? Okay, I didn't accomplish that. How can I do things better? We learn from our past, you know, all of that. But the lessons that we learn in unaccomplishment will help us accomplish whatever the next task is the Lord has for us. does not mean that you failed. Because God had, I mean, just look at Jesus' genealogy. He uses failure mm-hmm. all through Matthew chapter 1. Read it. You'll read all kinds of people in there. Everyone will want failures. All right. So let's let's take these last few minutes of the show and let's give them some ways to handle their accomplishments. And then we finish it out with how to handle the challenges of life. Because I think if we can give them some application... There, there are lots of pastors who teach and just preach at people and don't give them any application. Yeah, because if you don't give application, all you do is yakking. And making noise. You're yakking, and nobody's listening. Like a resounding gong is how the, the scripture puts it. Well, I, I kind of like the gong, though. Yeah, I kind of I like that. that um, okay. Well, you, you've got the list. So, so, so read your list because you've got a great list of, of how to do that. So. so this is all based in the idea of pray, listen, act. Um, yep. As our church, this is something that we believe is foundational. In fact... Um, you're going to hear a lot of that going forward. It's just, it's, I'm reeling you in. It's part of who we are, right? I mean, this is part of our language as a church um, and, and, and this show. I mean, we've talked about it yeah. a lot on the show. Have, you it's have to pray, listen, and act. Pray, listen, act. So this is all, while, while those phrases aren't necessarily tied into this, those, wor- those words, foundationally, that's where this comes from. So on how to handle accomplishments, um, in your prayer life, number one, name the accomplishment to God. You know, t- talk about <laughs> talk about the things that you've accomplished. You know, bring that up in your conversation with God. But don't just leave it there. You need to you need to thank God for that accomplishment, recognizing that that blessing, that accomplishment came from Him directly. Um, and then further from that is thanking God for giving you the resolve or the ability to achieve that accomplishment. You know, whatever it is, again, financial success or a job, you know, promotion or whatever the case is. Um, then praise God, celebrate, <laughs> like be, just be be excited. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being excited and being proud of good things that happen in your life. You should be. I mean, we're our God is a God of celebration. I mean, it says in uh, I don't remember which gospel, but Jesus is talking about. I guess it was Luke 15 that when someone gets saved, there's a party in heaven going on, right? Everybody's celebrating in heaven. So I mean, our God likes to celebrate. So good things, celebrate them. But then five, uh, pray for more opportunities to succeed in his will. And that's very important, his will. Um, I think oftentimes we pray for our will to be done on earth as we want it to be, <laughs> right. as opposed to for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Um, so be praying for him to succeed in his will through your life. Anything to add to accomplishments? So, so I, I would say you have to you have to find balance um, in, in things in order to to really feel like you're where you should be with the Lord. And the balance is this: um, if you want to see accomplishments in your life, um, be balanced, which means you got to be you got to be in the Word. Um, without that, you're you're going to be unbalanced. You got to be in church. Uh, you've got to have people around you. I mean, Scripture talks about how we're not created to do this life alone. We cannot be accomplishing what God has for us according to His plan and His purpose if we're not around um, His Word and around mm-hmm. His people um, because we need that accountability from our brothers and sisters, and they need you to help 
hold them accountable as well in their spiritual journey. And you can't just sit back online and, and think, hey, I've been to church because that just doesn't, that doesn't work. I mean, what you did is you've, you've watched a, a sermon on TV. You haven't participated. Um, so so you, you need to do that. Um, and I think that's probably the number one thing that I talk to people about is, is I don't feel like I'm, I'm really accomplishing much. Well, because you're not around God's people. You're not in church. You're not active um, and actively pursuing. So if you want balance, you got to be in the place where you're, you're balanced. And then, you know, life group. Man, get involved in a life group because there's accountability there. Um, and we don't like the word accountability, but yet accountability is all about accomplishments um, because that's where arp and sharns, arp, iron sharpens iron. And, and w- you know, we, we lift each other up that way. Yeah. So, um, so those are my, probably my big three or four, whatever I just gave you. Yeah, and that g- goes to a scripture that we had laid out for this this podcast was Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. I want to share this real quick with you quick with you because I think it ties that whole accomplishment thing up. This is Jesus, a uh, guy talking to Jesus. He says, then someone called from the crowd, teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Hey, that actually happens to pastors. <laughs> hey, tell my brother to give me my money. <laughs> that's that's essentially what it is. Um, Jesus replied, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Man, that's a good, that's, that's, that's good. Then he told them this story. A rich man had a fat, fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Whenever you have the phrase, I know, pop in your head. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Probably something bad's going to happen. Uh, maybe not always, but often. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods, and I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. This guy talks to himself a whole lot. A lot. (laughs) But God says to the guy, the farmer, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. So when it comes to our accomplishments, the big takeaway, make sure your relationship with God is right, because if it is, then you're going to give him glory for those things. You're going to yep. be thankful and grateful as opposed to having an attitude of pride and uh, you know overwhelming accomplishment in yourself as opposed to in God. So that, that, that's kind of full circle right there. Yeah. So let's close it with how to handle challenges now, because I, I think, honestly— particularly for many Christians, this is the harder one because this is what we deal with probably more often than the accomplishments. Um, I don't know about you, but you know, I, I, in my own life would say that I deal with failure more than I deal with accomplishment or at least right. failure that I would identify for myself. So number, the number one thing is when it comes to handling challenges is be open to constructive criticism and, and learning. Um, yeah. Not, 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 not everybody hates you. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes people will say things the wrong way. Sometimes they'll do things the wrong way. But there is some element of truth and, and, and teaching that can go on for us. And in constructive criticism, there's no room for but. Yeah, but. No. Just listen. That's all you have to do. Listen. Yep. Uh, and I, I can say for myself, that's <laughs> it's been a journey. That is not something that has come natural to me. I've had to learn that over time, and I, I, I would submit that I'm probably not great at it and still have work to do. Uh, number two, take a stand for Christ, because sometimes when failure is happening, you need to stand on principle and not necessarily be okay with failure, but understand that sometimes negative consequences, earthly consequences, come from taking a stand. And it's important to do that. We need to stand for Christ. Yeah, and sometimes you don't feel like it, but that's where your faith is fact, not feeling. Yeah. Number three, resist evil. Um, th- when we fail, we we have the inclination to make even worse choices sometimes and, and, and begin to repay evil with evil or do more evil because evil's been perpetrated on us or whatever the case is. Um, resist evil in all of its forms because the more you feed into the evil the darker your journey will become yeah and and i think on on the heels of that it's uh it's nice to know what evil is Mm. you know um that's staying in the word uh, staying in church that's not evil 
No, but I'm saying that's in order to know what evil is, oh, right. you've got to be in yeah, church you gotta be, it, and you got to be in the word. Right. But casting shadow on somebody, that's evil, gossip, evil, and then the list goes on. Ephesians chapter 5. There you go. Uh next one is pray or is our do good works. So, you know, I think from our perspective as pastors, oftentimes when people are going through dark moments, they tend to become shells of themselves and they tend to like sl- turtle themselves in on themselves. <laughs> I said it themselves a lot. Um but but they retreat. And so going to church, serving other people, doing the work that God has called them to do becomes a chore. It becomes too hard. And I would say push through and do good works. Serve. Be at church. Yeah. You know, and the pandemic hasn't helped that at all. I mm. mean, especially here at Hermaz. Uh, I shouldn't say especially, but even here at Hermaz. Um, it, it, it's hard, I think, right now for people to look at outside of the church for ministries because we've been so introverted looking inward how are we going to make it how are we going to survive how are we going to make church happen how we get you know how 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 instead of we and this is where we're pushing our church this next year is we gotta get back outside yeah and, and, and others focused because that's all jesus was even when jesus went to the cross he wasn't looking at the temple he was looking at the sinner yeah and we need to do that um next one is pray with confidence again we talked about pray listen and act you have the creator of the universe. It says in Scripture, if God is for us, who can be against us? You have the, the strongest, most powerful being ever on your side. Pray with confidence that when you go to God and say, I need something or I need you to work in my life or I need you to help me with this, be confident that he's going to work. Um, as we saw with Esther over the course of three weeks going through her story, God, you could look at that story and say God didn't show up at all because God actually is not brought up a lot in the in that book. But the truth is God was at work the entire time moving and and transforming and molding people and, and manipulating the situation to fit his will. And, um, you know, that's that's just how God works. He uses our bad stuff and our good stuff to to advance his will. So pray with confidence that, that when you when you pray about something, know that God is going to work. Um, <laughs> this probably should be number one. Commit your life to God. Yeah, that should be number one. Including the challenge. Yep. Um, laying everything at Christ's feet, surrendering your life, surrendering your, your challenges, your struggles to him is supremely important. Um, because, again, it takes the burden off of us and puts it on God who can carry it. Yeah. And then the last one, um, which I think is probably the hardest in the, the challenge list, accept God's promise that he is with you in the midst of the struggle. Because it can be very easy. We You mentioned this before. It can be very easy to either turn on God and say he's not there or forget that, you know, you yeah, there may be failure and yeah, you may have contributed to it, but ultimately God's with you and God's going to work it out like for his good. He's He's going to. We sang a song on Sunday, this previous Sunday, and uh, there's a line in there that that says, um, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Um, that's a piece of truth, absolute truth, as we talk about a lot on this show, that it's easy to say it. <laughs> it's a whole lot harder to actually believe it and make it a part of your being. Yep. And if you're going to get through challenge, if you're going to get through struggles, failures in your life, you need to believe that, that God is going to turn it for good because that's what he does. That's what he promises in Romans. Yep. And you may not see the good. I mean, you might be dead and gone before the good comes, but he says he will. So, so I want to end it with uh, 2 Chronicles fifteen seven. It says, but as for you, meaning us um, Christians, be strong and do not give up. Don't mm-hmm. go to sleep. Don't take a nap. Don't go to the restaurant, you know. Don't switch the channel. Don't get batteries for the remote to refresh it so you can go on another binge. He says, don't give up, but for the for your work will be rewarded. Mm. And it's not a reward here. It's your eternal reward. Um, so in order to really buy into that verse, you have to go back to have faith in Christ, Psalm 33. Yeah. You, got, you got to have that as your foundation. Um, and don't give up on that. Hang on to it. So... Church, you can do it. Those that are watching, you can do it. So if we can encourage you today, if I can encourage you today, if it would be just simply to say, you know what, you may not have accomplished your list and checked it off, 
you know, check the box off doesn't mean you failed. Um, just because you've invited somebody to come to church a hundred times and they haven't come doesn't mean you failed. Uh, because maybe you, uh, you know, aren't doing something in your career or in your marriage that maybe you uh, are feeling like, you know, should have done something different to be an accomplishment, you know, doesn't mean you failed. It What it means is, is like you, God's got room to work there. Let him work because that's where the accomplishment happens. And you let God work. You're not giving up. You're fighting the fight and keep going. Yeah. Well, we'll be back next week, uh, barring any changes from from you all. Yeah. Tell us what time we're coming back. Yeah. Like, are we going to move it to a different day, different time? Hey, good news coming. We don't we don't know what it's going to look like yet, but there. We said this before. I probably shouldn't even say this now because because I'm setting us up for yeah. failure. Yeah. <laughs> but exactly. it's not we be we we do have <laughs> plans to make some changes to our our setup here. I'm so glad you said plural because there's like, well. A plethora of plans. Any anybody who knows us, that, like when it comes to stage designs and stuff, that there's a starting point and the end point no, looks nothing like the starting point. <laughs> and the same is true here. We've we've gone through lots of different plans already, and we haven't even started it yet. That's why we, that's why we need people to help us with this, so we don't have to take time to do it. Yeah. Hey, if you're a carpenter or <laughs> woodworker or anything like that, and you wanna you wanna get to yeah. get to work, we got yeah. some things for you to do. So. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being here today. Thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> we'll see you next week on the Morning Burrito Podcast.